Hi viewers, my name is Ayla Tesler Mabe, and today we're going to be talking about the guitar pedals that every beginner should have. Let me just start by saying, you actually don't need any guitar pedals at all, even as a beginner, even as an advanced player. It's such a subjective thing, and it's just about finding your own sound and what works for you, and you know, what your budget allows as well. But that being said, if you are interested in exploring pedals, it can be such a fun way to help craft your individual sound on the instrument, help you sound a little bit more like your guitar heroes, and it can be a lot of fun. All right, so number one is a tuner pedal. Uh, I think for any guitar player, but especially a beginner, it is so important to make sure that you're in tune always, because that'll help you internalize you know, what in tune music sounds like, and then you can go from there. But you can get tuners for your headstock, you can get them on your phone, I love having it on my board. It's just so easy. It's already down here. I'm already looking at my feet all the time anyways. And there's usually some nice LED display because we're in 2021 and everything's all modern. And uh, you can even use it as a kill switch. I, I don't really do that, but I'm just saying in theory you could. Kind of fun. So you can get a tuner pedal like this one for anywhere between 50 and 150 or so bucks. And I think it's a great one to look into. Number two on our list, gain effects. So gain effects are usually some of the first pedals beginners want because Players of all styles typically use some form of gain effect. And I could probably make a whole video on gain effects themselves, but I want to take you through the three main ones just to give you an idea of which one might be right for you. So overdrive is probably the most versatile. It emulates the sound of an amp being cranked up all the way so that it starts breaking up. And it allows you to emulate the sound without actually having to crank your amp all the way up to 10. It's a biting, but not quite as heavy type of sound. Think like Stevie Ray Vaughan. A lot of classic blues and rock players use overdrive, and it's a great one to look into if you want something versatile, but you know it's gonna give you that awesome driven tone you're looking for. So the next gain effect is distortion. And this is one that's typically used in heavier styles of music. Uh, let me give you an example of what it sounds like. So yeah, the point of distortion is to just saturate your tone. Uh, again, you probably heard that was pretty heavy sounding, typical in metal music or other heavy forms of music like that, and typically has more sustain than an overdrive might, uh, and it's a great one to look into if you like heavier styles of music. All right, so gain effect number three is fuzz. And this is an effect that came quite literally from guitar players in the 50s and 60s using damaged equipment, and the pedal emulates that sound without requiring you to actually damage your equipment, which is great. And this effect is usually a little more difficult to harness as a beginner because it can take away from the articulation and clarity of what you're playing. But if you desperately want like a Hendrix or Billy Corgan type of tone or something like that, this might be a good pedal to explore. This is what it sounds like. So typically a gain effect will be somewhere between 50 and 300, depending on if you buy it used. Uh, again, boutique pedals are typically pretty pricey, could even be more than 300. But again, you just got to ask yourself uh, what your budget is and look for a pedal that's going to feel inspired to play and help you have fun and go from there. Okay, let's move on to category number three, time effects. Now this is a pretty big category. There's a lot of stuff included in here, but I want to give you just the most essential essentials. And number one is reverb. This whole video so far, I've been using reverb because it's probably my favorite effect ever. If I had to choose one effect to use for the rest of my life, 
It'd probably just be reverb. But as a beginner, uh, let's say you have an amp that doesn't have reverb, it can be so inspiring to add that to your tone because it can just really bring a whole other layer to it that uh, just helps you feel inspired and maybe makes you feel like you're playing on stage or something fun like that. But just to give an example of what I mean, this is a clean guitar tone with zero reverb, totally dry. This might be great for funk music, uh, or maybe this is the tone you're looking for. But I know when I was first starting, the second I could get a reverb tone like this, just felt so inspiring to me. And again, a lot of amps do have reverb built in, but some don't. Let's say you want to emulate the sound of a Fender tube amp. You might want to get a spring reverb or something like that. Like the pedal I have here is actually made by Fender. So it kind of has a spring reverb sort of tone to it, as well as some other crazy sounds. But I like just that extra bit of color and sort of essence that's added to it, for lack of a better term. And I think you should definitely look into reverb if your amp doesn't have it, or if you don't like the reverb on your amp. So just in case you're still unsure of what reverb is, I'll play a bit clicking the pedal on and off. Just look for the kind of sound you'd get if you were in a cave, you know, that little residue left over when you speak, that kind of echo sort of sound. So let's start with it off. Let's just ring out. All right, next time effect is delay. So essentially, delay is when you make a sound and then it repeats afterwards. There are lots of different types of delays to look into. The pedal I have here, the Digital Delay DD7 by Boss, not sponsored, but I wanted to mention it because it has so many different types of delay on it. And I think it's a great pedal to kind of do it all. So. Unless you have a very specific type of delay you fall in love with, it might be good to look into a pedal that can kind of do a range of different effects. So you can hear how the sound is just sort of echoing along behind it. I was talking about arena rock. I'm gonna throw on a bit of overdrive just to give you an example of what a solo could sound like with this tone. Pretty cool. Another example would be kind of like a slapback delay that you'd hear in a lot of 50s rockabilly sort of sound, like this. So just listen for that one extra repeat after each note. Again, it's super subtle, but just thickens up the sound a little bit and you might not have known that you can get that kind of sound from a delay pedal. This one is a little bit more obvious, and this is for anyone who likes psychedelia, Jimi Hendrix kind of stuff. This is a reverse delay. Sounds pretty cool. So you might have noticed that the sound came after what you could actually see me playing on the fretboard, because it was essentially taking everything I played reversing it, uh, hence the name reverse delay. But if you like those kinds of sounds, that comes from delay, reverse delay specifically. So feel free to look into that if you like the sound of it. Okay, so the last time effect I wanna talk about is the looper pedal. This can be so awesome for practicing with yourself uh, and you know building your own symphonies at home, really. You just play something, loop it, and then you can keep adding more to it. Let me give you an example of what this sounds like.
something like that. So I just looped a little bit, practiced my rhythm playing, practiced coming up with a sweet lick over top, practiced soloing, and the looper pedal helped me do that. So the price range for this is probably pretty similar to what we've been looking at so far. Usually effects like this aren't more than 200, but if you really want to get something crazy, it could get pretty expensive, especially with loop pedals. This small one here wasn't too much, but you can get some pretty extravagant loopers that go for hundreds of dollars. So it's up to you. Explore what you like. So the next category that you could consider is looking into what your favorite guitar players use. It's the age of the internet. Let's say you love Eddie Van Halen's tone. Look into what pedals you could get to sound like him. And some brands have even gone as far as to make very specific pedals to emulate specific artists. Like for example, here I have the MXR Phase 90, clearly meant to emulate Van Halen, Eddie Van Halen, if you look at the casing of it and everything. So if I were to throw that on in some overdrive, I could get kind of Van Halen tone. <laughs> When I first started playing, I really wanted to get the Van Halen tone, so that was one of the first pedals I got. You know, you could look into what Stevie Ray Vaughan uses, and you could find that he used the Ibanez Tube Screamer. Could look into one of those. Here's a Hendrix Univibe if you love that kind of tone. Here's a wah pedal if you really want to sound like Hendrix or Kirk Whammett or whatever. So before we move on to the last category, the consensus in the room is that no one understood my joke. I, I did mean to say Kirk Whammett. The joke was Kirk Hammett of Metallica uses a lot of wah. And so I said Kirk Whammett. And the more I say it, the less funny it is. So <laughs> moving on. If you don't want to spend a whole lot of money on individual pedals, or you're still not sure what pedals you even want, I would like to put forth an alternative to you. The last thing to consider is getting an all-in-one multi-effects unit. For example, the Line 6 Pod, or the Line 6 Helix, or the Boss ME80, or any variant of these, where essentially you end up with a pedal multi-effects unit that will give you a bunch of different effects in one. And this can be great if you're being conscious of your budget, you don't know what pedals you want yet, Anything like that. This can be a great way to explore a whole bunch of different sounds without you know, spending hundreds or thousands of dollars to get the individual pedals. Uh, again, you could also get this in an amplifier. This is called a modeling amp. It does the same thing as an effects unit like this, but it's actually built into an amp. You could consider getting an audio interface to help you connect your guitar to a computer, because then you can run through amp simulators in GarageBand or Logic X Pro or you know, bias effects, amplitude, all of those sorts of programs. Uh, I guess the downsides of this would be, for any tone purists, potentially could be something slightly synthetic about these tones. That's up for you to decide. Some people disagree. Some people really do agree with that statement. And also, you're kind of bound to using the effects exactly the way they were designed in here. Whereas with my actual board, I can really tweak, you know, the settings on each of them, I have more control of, you know, the tone overall. I can sculpt it more to my liking. But again, I'm just putting all these options out there just so you know it's available and you can find what works best for you because there really isn't a right way to approach finding your tone. The whole point of finding your own tone is to find what you like, find what you don't like, and then just proceed from there. So I hope you learned a little something today. And I would love to know in the comments down below, number one, what was the very first pedal you bought? Number two, what is your favorite pedal now? So I can answer the question. I wanna let you know that the first pedal I got was that wah pedal right there. Sounds great. And I would say my favorite pedal now would maybe be the LPD 68 Deluxe Drive on here, just cause it emulates the sound of a 68 era you know, Marshall stack or something crazy like that. And I like it a lot. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. <laughs>